I feel that speaking and listening shouldn't be seen as a tag on, it should be integral to every lesson. We've incorporated it into all our schemes of work at Key Stage 3, with formal assessments taking a very important part, and we're seeing the results at GCSE improve dramatically. A great idea for making links between books and real life. Homeless role play. A lesson that I do with my Year 9s that works well for speaking and listening is based on Robert Swindle's book um, Stone Cold, which looks at the issues of the homeless. And a really nice way into the lesson is a tableau where you forewarn a couple of pupils and they take on the role as the homeless people. And then pupils in pairs brainstorm some ideas around why they might be homeless and what feelings are evoked from looking at the scene. On your desk in front of you, you've got a whiteboard. And in your pairs, I'd like you to think about some ideas that you have in looking at this scene about the homeless. I ask them to come up with three to five words that they feel when they look at that picture of homeless people. And I also like to put a thesaurus on their desk so they think about extending their vocabulary when they're looking at this tableau and putting their words down, which we then feed back to class. We thought they looked quite depressed and abandoned. They look scared. Yeah. Well, we thought that because they're all alone, they don't even really trust anyone. The next part of the lesson, each pupil has half a sentence. They get up and they have to actively find the other half of their sentence to make a complete sentence. You've got to talk to each other about whether it matches and why it matches, OK? And then we're going to explore it a bit further. I've got um, selling the big issue is good because... Oh, no, I've got my mum kicked me out because... Oh, OK. What have you got? I think it's really important to get pupils out of their seats and speaking and listening because then they are not passive listeners, they are actually having to be very active and talking about why they've found each other and why that sentence goes together. It means that every single pupil in that lesson is involved. Selling the big issue is good because it's a way of making a small amount of money each week which buys food. Yeah, that goes together, yeah. Great, that's good. Well done for finding each other. Sit yourselves down, good. After they've found their pair, the, the two halves of the sentence, they then sit back down, they read out their sentences and we explore some of the issues regarding this. I get ill quite often through always being cold and wet and never really drying out. Good, can you imagine that day after day on the streets? I use the props of a hat and a microphone in my lesson because it actually promotes a really fun atmosphere, a safe and secure atmosphere, which is integral to good speaking and listening. It starts with this activity lends itself very nicely to the next, the third activity, which is the Socratic talk. They're actually getting an idea about the real issues as to why people are on the streets. So, you're a group of three. OK, so decide between you who's the homeless person, who's the questioner, who's the listener. You've got somebody who's listening actively and they're actually having to award marks on the answers given by the homeless person. It was the people that got me into the drugs. Um, they, they, they were all doing and I thought maybe it would be cool if I'd done it as well. But so, you, so you gave in to peer pressure? Kind of, yeah. I think, I think that's what... Kind of so we have one person who's got very fixed ideas on homeless people and then you've got somebody who's got to answer that in regards to being a homeless person and then you've got the third person who's the listener who's awarding marks based on a sheet I've given them as an example of what a good answer is, an average answer and a poor answer. Do you do drugs or alcohol? It's not my fault I drink, I have to forget what happened. At the end of the lessons, I get them in pairs to collaborate on a poem about the homeless, thinking about all the issues they've already covered. They then present these poems to the class. So you've got to think about what when you perform. When you perform something to the class, do you read it like this so everybody wants to just go to sleep? How do you how do, you do it? Yes? You need lots of expression in your voice. Good girl, you need lots of expression in your voice. Well done. I sit there all day and all night long. I am abandoned and have nowhere to go. I'm trapped in my own situation, even though I'm free. With the speaking and listening embedded throughout the lesson, with them working on the activity towards a dramatic performance, I've always been thrilled with the quality of the work they've produced and the really thoughtful um, and emotional pieces of work that are presented to the class. A great idea for introducing Wilfred Owen. War correspondent group work. Bent double, like old beggars under sacks. Knock-kneed, coughing like hags. We curse through sludge. 
One of the ways that I found that's very effective in engaging students in a lively but very emotive way is through a dramatisation of Wilfred Owen's Dolce de Est. Men marched asleep. Many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshod. So prior to the lesson where they perform the drama, um, I meet with about five students and we explore how they could create a drama that links with the language of the poem. And we have a couple of practices. Guess, guess. It's not difficult getting it together. I beg and borrow if I can get helmets, gas masks, and the students can bring in their own clothes to dress up for the performance. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light. The first time I tried this, I was quite nervous and thought it could go either way. And I think sometimes you have to be brave and try different things with students. Dolce et decorum es perpetually amore. It's sweet and honourable to die for one's country. Each year that students have performed Dolce et decorum est in front of their peers, I love the reaction of the rest of the group. I think it's quite upsetting, the fact that they're friends of war die and, and then they just have to leave them behind. Like if someone dies in front of them they have to carry on and not think that someone's died. Like they can't just go help them, they have to just carry on and keep going. Wilfred Owens shows us the actual reality of the war. It's not all easy and stuff but it's actually devastating at times. Following on from their immediate responses um, after the drama, I set them up as war correspondents, so they're going to research sections of the poem, feeding off each other's ideas. When it says that they're drunk with fatigue, it's like they're so tired they have no idea what they're doing. It's like if you've been drinking alcohol and you don't know what you're doing. With the focus on being a war correspondent, they're not thinking they're students in a classroom analysing the language. They can take on a role and they're researching for a news report that they feed back towards the end of the lesson when they've gathered as much information as they can from each other. So still at this stage, no writing takes place, no note taking. And with focused questions, they build on each other's ideas develop their understanding through the ideas of their peers and perhaps engage with things that they hadn't noticed themselves. Why do you think the soldiers flung him in the wagon? They've got to get away from wherever they are. The if they violent. wait one minute, then yeah. they're just going to get bombed. And you go, why are you bent double like old beggars on the sacks? Yeah. So for this lesson, my ultimate aim is as war correspondents, the students are engaging with the language of the poem for the first time. They haven't seen this poem before, they're sharing their ideas, but they're presenting it through a medium that distracts them from the fact that they're analysing poetry. Hello and welcome. We're live from the trenches. What kind of atmosphere is in the war? Well, it's terrifying, isn't it? Like, people are shouting and you just don't know what's happening. We heard gas shouting at us, so we all were stumbling and fumbling for our masks, but he didn't get one, unfortunately. What's the atmosphere at the moment? Dark, depressing, it's horrible. Part of my assessment for learning on how the students have understood and engaged with the poetry from this lesson, um, we have a frontier system at schools, an intranet, where we can have online discussions like Facebook, MySpace, Twittering, and the students have a nice way of commenting on what they've learned, and I can monitor the discussions that are going on. A great idea for exploring tone and expression. Creating group stories. Year sevens don't realise what a key skill speaking and listening actually is because it's a skill that we take for granted, that we use in everyday life. A lesson that works really well for me with my year sevens is that we make group stories. The first thing we do is they are given a sequence of speaking and listening levels from levels three to seven and they have to define what is the level three, four, five, six, and seven? I think maybe that one goes there. Okay. Because it is quite difficult to engage some, the attention of someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one looks level four. And yeah, then level that one that level, one level three. three. They get to see what skills they need to build upon getting up to a level seven. And it helps them focus on key words of what they need to do in order to improve. Now, this leads us on to our next task. As you can see, you have uh, a sheet in front of you. Can you all see this? Yeah. What I would like you to do is, working with your partner, one of you is going to be the director, 
and the other is going to say the speech aloud. I use two extracts. One extract's the incantation of the witch's spell from Macbeth, and I also use an extract from the Winston Churchill speech. It helps them, you know, really pick out what's a key word and why. Why should I express this word and, you know, maybe use a softer tone for another. So it gets them thinking. Fill it with a funny snake in a cauldron boil and bake. It should be, like, more mysterious. It's like you're a witch and you're making, like, a bad potion or something. For the main part of the lesson, I divide them into groups of three to make up a group story. One of you is going to be in charge of the beginning, the other the middle, and the other person the end. You are not allowed to write. You have to speak and listen to each other. They're giving a black bag, which one person from the group of three has to choose an item from. I put anything that I can find around the house. I use a dress a bottle, anything that can, you know, be used to inspire them in order to make up a group story. Ooh! Ooh! Oh. What is it? <laughs> it's a wig! <laughs> but Love then she wanted to change it to some comfortable clothes and she left it in the changing room and then somebody... Stole it. Stole it. One day she was searching the street for scraps of food when she saw the silver shoes glistening in the sun. Next thing she knew, she heard a mouse squeak. Suddenly, she realised she was a filthy rodent. Pause there, OK, so what is she doing well and how could she improve? It could be like a fairy tale, like someone who had hair like that sort of thing. Yeah. So it could go like, she had hairdressers and on and she was bored of her hair, so she cut it off. And next day, she woke up and she found it lying next to her. Your vocabulary, excellent. You know, one day, glistening shoes, very nice, yeah? But I don't see any expression, especially when you said suddenly, right? Speed your pace up and, you know, no one speed up. So suddenly, pause and then continue, OK? So keep on practising, guys. To ensure that there was active listening, I asked the pupils to use the mark scheme and, you know, assess their peers what they did well and what they needed to do in order to improve. It was a small, lazy hotel off Route 66. An old man in a black tie perched at his desk and then he suddenly heard a ring on the door. It definitely helps them seeing their peers up there because they think, ooh, that's what I need to do when I need to go up. They definitely did level four then. They did engage my attention because I thought it was quite good. So using the mark scheme, they're able to identify it. Like, yes, that's a uh, varying, you know, variety of tone of voice. Yet yeah, that's using, you know, being very confident and then they're able to go up and perform it and hopefully do as well, if not better. They talked confidently and they used a lot of facial expression, especially Ben. <laughs> and I thought the way that he spoke was, it made it more interesting. Begin as you mean to go on. And that's why we start with Year 7, because if they get these skills now, there's no reason why they shouldn't be brilliant, you know, when it's needed for their GCSEs and for life. Communication skills, we all need it.